Hey, we're live! Welcome to episode 76 of the Beastly Thought Show. Another live show. This is number 76. All of this information you've already gleaned from the intro. Yes. Let's get it started. We got a lot of news today. <laughs> what have you been playing, yeah. guys? Let's start with Robbie today. What, Robbie, what have you been playing today? This week. This week, I have been so addicted to Destiny, guys. I have played it so much. I have an amazing story to tell you guys, too. I got an amazing... Whoa, what's going on? I don't know, but I know you said amazing. The show was playing it. Okay, sorry. Um, had some technical difficulties. So anyways, I got the... Turn that down, Robbie. Turn that porn down. (laughs) No, I just started... (laughs) But anyways, I got the most amazing weapon drop this week. I was so excited. What happened was... I think it was Thursday night. I was waiting for Zur. It was 10 or 11 at night. He was coming in a couple hours. I was playing Crucible. Match after match, everybody was getting legendary drops constantly. People were getting Party Crashers and Ash Factories, and I was getting nothing. I played so many matches, and then finally it happened. At the very end, one of the matches we won, I saw these words pop up on screen. Robus Call found Hawkmoon, and I lost lost my mind. I was so happy because I got absolutely nothing. (laughs) Everybody was getting weapons, and then, bam, it happened. I was just, oh, man. You'll never forget your first Hawkmoon. Kate has it, and she's never even used it. What? I couldn't believe it. (laughs) Kate has it, and she's never even used it. That's how I got mine, too, Robbie. It was the exact same situation. I was playing playing an Iron Banner. Uh, It was just kind of like, you know, grinding out those Iron Banner reputation points, and all of a sudden, end of a match, boom, Hawkmoon drops. I'm like, whoa! I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my god, Hawkmoon! Holy shit! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, I did. this is the one time I never expected it to drop. That was just amazing. Robbie, were you in the Iron mind. Banner, or were you uh, playing a different uh, multiplayer competitive mode? Just straight Iron Banner? Just uh, the control for House of Wolves. Just wow. that playlist. And I got Hawkmoon. Really? And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Amazing weapon. I love it so much. Oh, wow. so good. I got a similar story as something happened to me today. I was playing The Last of Us, the multiplayer mode. And, and moving um, on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Robbie, I know you've been playing Destiny. We actually played Destiny together this week uh, and had a good time, me, you, and the wife. Your yep. wife. And, and we also uh, played. Yes. We also, what, why don't you go ahead and tell me what else we played, what you thought We also played some Rocket League. I finally got into this week. Man, that game is a ton of fun. Oh, my God. That was awesome. Playing with you and uh, your wife, it was awesome. And then it kind of sucked that we were always on, like, the opposite team for whatever reason. That he was kind of frustrating. We could be on the same team. Yeah, we, he just he joined our, our, our game, but he didn't join our party. Our, so. Yeah, uh, so it kind of put me on their team a couple times, and then I was on the other team, so... Yeah, it was what it was. It was super fun, though. Really loved it. Oh, that game. That game is... That is my most fun PlayStation Plus game ever. I, I could play that. I think I could probably play that for years and still have just as much fun. It's so good. It's I've been so thinking good. about this game a little bit lately because we talked about it a lot last week. So for anybody who doesn't know, it's basically like a soccer with cars that can uh, boost and they can... Rocket boost and they can jump, right? And you play in an arena that's got like glass walls that you can drive on. It's super, super fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody knows about this game at this point, but if you haven't played it, it's awesome. It's got real server issues, but everybody's giving it a free pass because it was a free game. <laughs> I, haven't run into, not, I haven't run into one issue yet with the server. I did read that when the game first dropped, nobody could get a match, but I didn't download it until a few days later. Mm-hmm. And so after I downloaded it, every game starts like almost immediately. I haven't had any issues finding that. Just, so I think, Robbie, what about you? Last night, did you have any issues? No, I mean, the connection seemed very stable to me. There would be odd points where the car would kind of lag a little bit, like somebody would work, but it was like barely at all. I barely noticed it. The server issues were like you couldn't connect to a multiplayer game. That was the problem, right? Oh, no, we didn't have any issues with That's that. That's great. We I'm glad to hear it. Um, the yeah. other thing I'm wondering is, this game was obviously free on PSN. Do you think it would have caught fire like it has? I mean, this is right now everybody's favorite game. It's like just everybody's darling right now because it's just it's pure distilled fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it would have caught on like this if it wasn't for free? If if somebody told you about this game but you had to pay twenty bucks for it like you do on PC, would you have making the plunge? Taking the plunge? I don't know. I'd probably be more likely to try it. Um, who knows if they had maybe a demo or whatnot. I never really got into racing games, kart racers. 
I don't know. I, all I know is I'm very happy that now any version of this game that comes out in the future, I will buy it. I have to at this point. This game is just magic. So when they do announce Rocket League 2 for $20 or if they add more maps or different types of maps or different types of gameplay modes, I'll buy it no matter what. This is a game I feel like any gamer needs to have. The unfortunate thing um, is that it's only on PlayStation 4 and PC. So it's one of those crazy situations where I feel like a game so good needs to be played by everybody, and it's just PS4 and PC. But I don't know. That's another question I asked. Did, did they miss the mark by releasing it for free? I, I think they hit their mark by re- releasing it for free. I'm sure they're not getting you know the full amount of money they would be getting per copy as if they just released it for $20 a copy. But I'm sure they worked out a deal with, you know, Sony, you know, however many copies do get given out for free, we'll give you a little bit of money. And I think because it is free, this thing's like flying off the shelf, so to speak. You know, it's like it's insanely popular. You look on YouTube, like, you know, I know Destiny YouTubers are making videos of it. I know Minecraft guys are making videos of it. Call of Duty guys are making videos of it. Everybody making videos of this thing because it's so much fun. And it's incredible because it's got depth, you know. When you first log in, you're like, okay, this is fun. It's stupid fun, but it's fun. But as you play it more and more, you get better at the handling of the car. You get a little more used to, like, how the ball physics work and when that ball is actually going to drop. You know, Robbie, you'll learn about that in a couple of years. And, you know, it just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> just continue. Shut up. As you go, you kind of learn more and more about the physics of the game and... You, you find out, yes, you can actually get good at this. You you can yeah. practice and learn the physics, and you get better and better as you go. So if I was playing the the me the Briar Rabbit of two weeks ago, I know that I would kick my ass, you know, because it 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 really is. It's like it's got it's got a deep like system to it. It's got a learning curve, and I'm I'm ex- I'm excited about it. Yeah, I definitely I, I, don't think this game would have caught wildfire as it has if it weren't free, I think. Especially looking at it myself, I think I would have looked at this game, I would have been like, eh, probably not worth it, I'll wait till it drops in price, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But the fact that it's free, everybody can access it, I think it definitely blew up because of this, and I don't think it would have been as successful. So I think oh, they made the right call making this a free game for PlayStation Plus. You said, oh shit, oh shit, what? Uh, not nerdies in the chat, I'm going to invite them to the... Oh, yeah, get him in there. Yeah, I I, got to agree with you guys. I know from the perspective of a developer, they're probably wondering if their money is going to break even versus doing it this way versus actually releasing the game with a retail price. I think now everybody knows about this game. Everybody has high respect and accolades and loves this game. So whatever they do in the future is pretty much solidified going to be a success as long as it has the name Rocket League on it. I told a buddy at work last week, Friday, I said, you have PlayStation Plus? He said, yeah. I said, download Rocket League on your PS4. He said, what is that? I said, that's your number one reason right now <laughs> if you have fucking PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Uh, you need to get this. It's really amazing. Uh, I didn't think it would be as good as it is. Uh, you hear about games from people from time to time, and sometimes people have different gamer tastes, but when you try it, and within five minutes you realize this, like you said, Briar, unadulterated fun. Yeah, that's the best way to describe what Rocket League is, and I've been actually understanding and and progressing it with my skill as well. I've learned some new tricks, double jumping, flying through the air, going up with your rocket, all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. It takes time, effort, and practice, but the game is amazing. I can't wait till we all get in there and play it together. Yeah, what's great too is like if you get a team together and you start communicating as a team, you yeah. can actually get like those kind of strategies like you'd see in an actual soccer game. Right, yeah. it's like cross passes and you know that kind of thing, and it becomes like a strategic game. Like it, there's actual tension going mm-hmm. on in this multiplayer game that you, you don't you don't expect you don't see it coming when you log in for the first time. You're just like bashing a ball around a soccer field with a car that's got a rocket on it. You know, managing your boost right is like you don't want to just use your boost constantly. You want to save it either to ten goal, like if the other team makes a break for it, or if your team makes a break. You want to get up there so you can support your team and kind of hopefully, you know, get that goal. It's it's so Definitely. fun. It's so deep. It's so incredible. Yeah, I can't wait to play it some more. I yeah. uh, wish we move on though. Get to some other stuff. Okay, uh, is that all you've been playing, Robbie? Rocket League. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and especially because getting the Hawk Moon this week really helped uh, calm my, my saltiness of Zer not selling a weapon. So I'm a lot oh, happier yeah. now. That's crazy, yeah. isn't it? Like. 
Zerd just didn't show up with a weapon this week. I know, I got yeah, exactly. He was tired of treating everybody so good. This week, he all he had was armor. And I Hopefully, next to a different Zerd. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what I've been doing this week, guys, I've been doing something a little bit different. I've been playing a lot of Destiny this week. All right. I probably put six or seven hours in. Uh, I still haven't gone to uh, Osiris yet because I'm only level 33, Briar. Oh, okay. That's that's enough. You can you can play Trials of Osiris as a level 33. It'll be okay. tough, but you can do it. That, yeah, guys, I think the difference is only like one percent damage. <coughs> Holy <coughs> shit! A new player is joined. What's up, guys? How you <laughs> doing? Hey. How you doing? Good, good, man. Uh, been going through a lot of stuff in the past, and I got a little. Sickness, and then like I, I'm a lot better now, but then other stuff happened, so I've been out of YouTube for a while. It's awesome, but, to, awesome to see you. We're so happy to see you, man. <laughs> How's He's everyone back. doing? He's back. Right. I heard you guys talk about Rocket League, man. I think the game's addicting, but also it's one of those games that you can have so much fun, but yet it'll piss you off when someone scores <laughs> off like a bounce that you didn't think it was gonna bounce. Like, <laughs> like I was. Killing this guy, I was winning. Like, I think like seven to one. You know what I mean? And you want to know that I blew the lead and I lost in overtime. <laughs> oh like, in, man! In, in overtime, because like I was fooling around doing like stupid shots, trying to make it from far away, and he caught up. And then he actually pushed into overtime with five seconds left. I I don't know why I went for the ball. I could have just let him shoot it and like just play defense. I went for the ball and I and I went too high. And you know sometimes you just float in there for a while. You have to wait till you land. And by then he got the ball and he shot it with one second and sent it into overtime. So in overtime, I was about to make the shot. I went full speed to make the shot. I didn't have to go full speed. All I had to do was tap the ball in. I hit the edge of his goal. It bounced back. Towards yeah. the other direction, towards my goal, and oh. he just tapped it in for the win and won it. Oh over. my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have those moments, and the moment that really pissed me off the most, it was the first time I rage quit in this game. Uh, we were at a tiebreaker, and uh, it was overtime, and the guy who was on Kate and I's team, he shot aggressively, shot the ball into our goal. He was supposed to be going to the other goal. So I knew exactly what happened. He didn't know which goal he was supposed to be going towards, and he killed us, and so I rage quit. But the oh, game was no. amazing. Uh, I love the game. I've been doing a lot of Destiny this week. I've also been playing Rocket League. I put probably about three or four hours in on that. That's just mindless fun. You don't have to really commit to time frames. You can go in there for 10, 20, 30 minutes if you want, have a ball and get out. Uh, also, I've been playing some Last of Us today. Uh, I had one of those situations that Robbie had uh, where he had got the special drop in Destiny. That happened to me in The Last of Us. I was in the middle of a match. My wife was gone. It was just me and my daughters here. And in the middle of the match, I heard my oldest daughter say, Hey, Dad, Nina just pooped on herself. So that was my drop. And so I had to drop the controller and go in the damn bathroom and clean her up. But um, that Moving was on. Like one of those special <laughs> moments in gaming history. Okay. 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 I, I don't know how that happened. Like that, that just went wildly out of control, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just Moving say on from that story. Can I just say so? I've been gone for a while, but um, I'm back, and there's Destiny and Last of Us. Have I really been gone that long? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> sir, you have not. <laughs> what have you been playing, man? It's been forever since you've been on the show. What have you been p playing? Uh man, a lot of different games. But, uh, the most recent Batman. Uh, Batman. Ark Knight, I beat the game. Um, I have 20 Riddler trophies left, and then the, the game's fully 100% being, and, and then I got to do the DLC. Um, but the game is really good, but I can't believe the one part about this game that, that got me upset, no spoilers or anything, like, the worst part about the game should be the best part. If you were to tell me that the Batmobile will be the worst part of a Batman game, like, <laughs> I would tell you you're crazy, but to me, the tank, anytime it turned into a tank, it got me pissed off. Like I'm like, I don't want to be shooting tanks in the Batman game. I'm sorry. That was the one thing. But everything else in the game was so much fun except the tanks. I, that's just yeah. my opinion. I, it was the not Batmobile was very hit or miss, I would say. There are times where I love yeah. the Batmobile, but there are times where I'm just fighting it, and I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, Why did you do this, Rocksteady? Come on. Well, well, who actually, like, when you went to a different mission, who actually drove in the Batmobile? I just flew up in there. Like, I wasn't going to waste my time cutting corners when I could just fly there so much quicker. I just Same glided the whole way, yeah. so yeah. I don't know. So, Franklin. But, 
that's pretty much it. That 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 game right there. Um, I played a lot. I played the God of War three, so that was the, the newer one. So that that's pretty cool. Um, it looks it looks good. It looks the same. Just does look a little bit nice on the PS4. Can, can, you, notice, can you really notice a difference there though? I mean, I've the seen movie, some videos. The sixty frames per second, you can definitely tell. Like if that's the thing, like. You really don't realize how much of a difference 60 frames per second until you get games like that where it, it's needed, and you'll see like and stuff like that. That's that's only difference, but like that's it. I mean, the color, yes, it does look better and stuff, but it's really not a huge difference except the frames per second. So, gotcha. yeah. All right, guys. So why don't we move on to the the news of the week? Let's start off with what, what, the biggest what, what, news what, of the week. What, what, oh, I'm sorry. What the? I forgot <laughs> something. Did you play this again, right? Today. Yesterday, actually, was one of the best days I've ever had in Destiny, loot-wise, wow. right? I did an unboxing video where I was, like, unboxing all, like, the uh, packages that I've collected for the last two weeks, and I got the Dead Orbit ship. I was super excited for that, right? Then I played some Trials of Osiris, and I'm actually going to make a video of this. I already have the title of the video, right? It's going to be called uh, The Irishman, The Potato, and The Jewel. And, but I'm going to give you guys a little hint, right? I got a Jewel of Osiris out, out of Trials of Osiris with Solar Burn. I was so excited about it that I nearly shit myself. <laughs> it was a, one day, two awesome drops. Now we have two poop stories. Two Jeez. poop stories, one <laughs> drop. <God. sighs> so that was your best day ever in, in Destiny. Wow. And if the game's been out this long, and your people are still having their best damn day, jeez. It was a good day. It was a wow. real good day. Good Trials stuff. of Osiris is my new favorite thing. Like, it really uh, is. The, the competitive nature of it, the tension, like having the whole team riding off of your success, right? Because you only got a three-man team. Everybody's got to contribute in the Trials of Osiris. You can't carry – well, I can't carry anybody in Trials of Osiris. I'm not that good. Everybody's got to play, and everybody's got to play their heart out and contribute. So when you have a, t- a team that goes to the lighthouse, like everybody is psyched about it, and all three of you like making that walk from like landing your ship all the way to the actual chest, like running all the way to the chest, and everybody's anticipating, what am I gonna get? What am I gonna get? What am I gonna get? And then you open that chest, and one guy's always pissed off because he got the scholar for the fourth time or the summoner for the fourth time. Uh, but today or yesterday. It was my day. It was no, my no. day. It was Briar's day. Look, Your Briar. day, Briar. <laughs> you go, Briar. So, so, Briar, you said that me being level 33, I could actually participate oh, yeah. in the trials yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm going to do this week, then. I look forward to that. Seeing some new stuff, some new drops I've never seen before is going to be really exciting. Wow. Okay. So, guys, this week we had a really uh, tumultuous week, and starting off is kind of a somber story. Uh, a video game legend, uh, Satori Iwata, Nintendo's chief has uh, passed away, and this happened a few days ago. And so let's have a brief moment of silence for a, a video gaming legend. Silence over. What are you guys' thoughts on Nintendo's future? Uh, and did Satoru Iwata affect you guys in any way growing up playing Nintendo? He's been with Nintendo since 1983. So it's, he's been there for a long time. He's seen Nintendo's great great moments and not so great moments. Uh, and he's very important to the legacy of Nintendo. He's created his own legacy. And uh, I made a video about the guy. I think he's a fantastic, a wonderful person. I love the way he came across the Nintendo Directs. And it's an unfortunate thing. But now uh, uh, Miyamoto uh, is actually helming Nintendo temporarily until they find someone else to permanently seat that chair. What are you guys' thoughts on Nintendo from this point? Uh, first, I want to say it's kind of eerie um, because I, I was watching your show like last week, and you guys were talking about Nintendo. First of all, it's rare. You guys don't talk about Nintendo that much on the show, and then when you talk about Nintendo like last week, and like literally like about I don't know 30 minutes after the show was done, it yeah. was announced. So I, so I was like, man, like that was so weird because you guys were talking about that and moving, like what they should have did to make it right. And I just saw it. I was like, man, that's pretty eerie that it happened, first of all. Unrelated. Was, just saying. Unrelated. What? <laughs> what <was that>? Unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I just think that it, I think it kind of sucks in many reasons because, like, you know, Nintendo is getting, like, a bad name right now. And I, you always want to see someone, if they, they go out, go out when they're at their best. And, like, it just, like, 
it, it sucks because some people like see it as like some people didn't want him to be there as you know the in charge of Nintendo anymore, and it sucks that he went out like this when he did so many good things for them before in the past, and like he made yes. them where they were. Mm -hmm. You know, he helped them make them known for Nintendo, you know? And it just sucks that it ended like that. I think that was probably the, the, the worst part, that he couldn't go out, like, on top. You know Definitely. what I mean? At the top of his game. That To me, that's what kind of sucks. Because, like, he's way better than what he showed at the end. You know? So that, that's what kind of sucks for me. He was a creative, right? He was a... Uh, you know, he, he programmed games. He was a programmer. He was a guy who created... And uh, he got promoted to basically as high as you can go inside Nintendo. And I think that that showed in Nintendo's direction in the last, I don't know, 12 years, was it, that he was heading up Nintendo? It's yeah, stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm not a Nintendo follower like a lot of people are. Uh, so it was after his death that I kind of looked into who he was. And it was incredible, his accomplishments, you know. And it was incredible, his hands-on approach to games. Like, he just, like, even though he was, like, the lead of the company, he was still getting in there and getting shit done. You know, even when Earthbound came out, he just, like, pushed people aside and said, no, 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 we got to fix this. we got to make this better for the U.S. release. Balloon Fight, he just pushed people aside. we got to make this, you know, we're going to get this done. You know, he, he was a creative guy who had the power to get things done, and he never lost that creativity and will to make things perfect. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I think he was a good man. He was a great leader. He uh, led Nintendo through some of their highest points with the Wii and some of their lowest points with the Wii U. But overall, I think he was passionate about what he did, and uh, it's a pretty sad loss. I'm definitely going to have to say rest in peace, Iwata. I hope all your friends and uh, family are getting over this. I mean, this has got to be very tough for them. So Deepest condolences. Deepest condolences. Yeah. So Shigeru Miyamoto, guys, uh, the creator of little-known games like Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Star Fox, he is actually temporarily seating that chair uh, in the same position that Satoru Iwata was in. Do you guys think this is a good decision? Would you like to see him sit there maybe permanently, or do you think that he's not a good fit to lead a company? That I think that this guy is so creative. I'd love to see what he could do if he is given ample time to make some real choices on Nintendo's future. I just want to a new Mario game that that uh, lives up to the hype. I want to see a great Mario game, not the same kind rehashed over and over again. I think you always got to have the relationship of art and business to run a company, and I don't really know him enough about him to say that he has both of those things, right? He's definitely an artist. He's definitely like a, a very talented artist. Uh, I don't, I don't know enough about his business sense that he would be able to lead Nintendo in a way that would make Nintendo successful. You know, I, I have no idea. The I agree. Is, there's another gentleman who's co-chairing it with him. Shigeru Miyamoto is not doing it alone. Nintendo actually plays him and another gentleman from Japan to co-run Nintendo temporarily. So maybe the other gentleman is more of the business end and Miyamoto is more of the creative side, hopefully. Uh, this is an exciting time for Nintendo. It's a tumultuous and, and, and a sad, somber moment for Nintendo. But I'm hoping that through this they come out on top uh, and, and are as great as we, as they once were, and as great as I think they can be in the future. The, the thing is, like, I wonder if, like, this is going to see. I, I think this is an opportunity to go with different routes, sort of, like, sort of, like, to try to compete with other companies, like, fresher ideas, like, to say, like, to not lose what you had in the past, but yet to gain something in the future. For example, little things like, I don't know, when you're online, you get to talk to people, like stuff like that to keep in pace with everyone else. Like you would think stuff like that, you know, they need people to say, hey, you know what, we, we did well in the past, but now we have to keep up to date with everyone else. And it's not like you have to lose what you had to make you good. Like you don't have to lose Mario, you don't have to lose Zelda, but you still got to start to do things to gain other people in, the, in that world. And that's how you... You add third-party companies. You have to show that you're willing to stay in touch with everyone else, but show your own flavor in the mix. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's what hopefully whoever does, you know, that is in charge will do that. And that's why I don't think he should be in charge, is because he's part of that old school mentality. He like he did a great job with Zelda, Mara, and all that stuff. But like the part, of, the, the problem is he's also part of that old school mentality that got them to where they are at the moment, and they sort of need to go a different route. You know what I mean? I think that's. 
It's like, I don't know, if you're looking at sports or anything like that, I know I'm bringing sports into uh, a video game podcast, but... Off topic. Off topic. Off topic. <laughs> if, like, you know, if you lose the coach, like, uh, usually the owner wants to go a different route completely. They don't want to just bring someone that's uh, that was assistant coach up. You want to get someone that's completely fresh to start over to give not just the team, like, hope, but also the fans hope. Because now you're saying, now you're bringing a whole new team, a whole new lineup. Now it's, like, fresh opportunity, and it's starting over in a good way, in a positive way. Even if it's Definitely. not that much of a big change, you're giving people that were fans a chance to say, you know what, I might go back. I want to see what they're doing now. I want, I'm kind of curious what this new person is going to do. And I think that's something, that's an opportunity to do that now. If they want to just make a big, good decision, they should just hire Don Matrick and just call it a day. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. I don't think I think Don Magic is working in a Dairy Queen in Seattle. Okay. So let's <laughs> continue. Uh, brand new EA development studio is, is a brand new EA development studio is open known as Motive, assisting Visceral Games in development of their unknown Star Wars game. Super okay. cool news. I'm uh, it definitely shows that this developer is no joke. Like this is going to be a big AAA developer, if the first thing they're working on is Visceral Star Wars game, that's a big project. So obviously, they're bringing in more people to do that. They want to get that game more out the door, I guess. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, it wait maybe. A Isn't this game coming out in like four months? No, well, it hasn't been the... even announced yet. So yeah, This is the oh, unknown okay. Okay. Star Wars game. All right, I'm yeah. not, it's, this is in Battlefield. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is Visceral's Probably. unknown Star Wars game, which we believe is going to be open world, I guess. So. Nights of the yeah, Old Republic is super 3. Cool. Yeah, Please? but this is super cool news. I mean, I'm excited about this, and obviously they're going to do their own project after this. This is pretty cool. I think so. This isn't the okay. one in uh, Canada with Jade Raymond, is it? No, yeah, it, it is. is. It's Jade Raymond. Oh, yep. Okay. Like in Montreal, I think. I just want to see how Battlefront works because that's going to be the side factor if they're going to do Star Wars Justice or not. Because if that comes out the way it's looking right now, like it, it looks. Okay, but I feel like it's going to come out sort of like Battlefield, like where it had a lot of problems in the beginning, and then as they go along, they're going to try to make it better. Don't be broken. And I, mean, I don't know why they're calling it Battlefront. They might as well call it Battlefield Star Wars. Like, it's... That's <laughs> what it is. Battlefield. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, but... I just hope I'm hoping they're gonna do well. I, I'm just hoping. I, I love that series and that that demo that they showed sold me. And so if, even if it comes out with issues at the beginning, which is unfortunate, but something we see more and more of every day, I'm willing to wait until they iron that out. Honestly, I'm gonna wait to buy it until they iron it out. Yeah, that's just I'm gonna wait to purchase that game. I can tell you right now, I'm not buying that game day one. There's no yeah, way just, in hell. It's as smart. much as I want to get on Battlefront Day 1, guys, you know I can't because I'm super worried about this game. Like, obviously, if it's going to work on Day 1 or not, I'm not going to pre-order it. I have to wait on this one. I do. What if, it, what if a pre-order gets you a free Stormtrooper helmet? Holy shit. That's not enough. No, that's not enough! <laughs> a light to wear it to the I, have faith. <laughs> I have faith it'll work Day 1. Year 2, though. Like, <laughs> 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 not the first year. <laughs> well... Let's keep our fingers crossed. we got a lot of Star Wars goodness coming our way in the, the coming months and years. So I think it'll be good overall. Uh, and I'm really excited to see them actually revitalizing that brand. The movie looks amazing. The game looks like it's going to be awesome. And this unknown Star Wars, this open world, I'm just anxious to see what they do with it. I'm yeah, excited. It's about I mean, they're an amazing so, developer. I'm sure it'll be awesome. We'll yeah, look forward so to it. Hopefully that happens soon. Yeah, okay, guys. EA is rushing it though to come like to come out around the same time as the movie. Is that why they're? You think it's this game's being rushed too quickly? No, I think that's probably why it doesn't have a single player. I, I think you know I think that's why it's missing parts of the game because I think they're trying to release it around the same time as the movie. Well, possibly, I guess. Could be possible. I yeah. think that movie. I think that's going to be the biggest movie of all time. Let me just say that now. Uh, and even if the it really released, uh, reach it on that one, huh? I Wait, think it'll be the biggest movie of all time. Those predictions, Wait, huh? It's going to be Jurassic World? Yep. Really? Yes. Yeah, I was shocked Jurassic World beat like, everything. Like That was pretty damn good. Star Wars is going to beat everything I think that was ever made. That's yeah. my prediction. You guys are with this prediction. Wow. So, it's, it's, <laughs> almost, it's undoubted because if you think about it, it's got, it's got one of the biggest names in movies. It's, you know, it's got unparalleled hype. It's, it's coming got out. the original cast. 
Yeah, it's coming out in December. Like it's it's almost undoubtedly. It would have to be a complete piece of shit not to. The break Star it Wars name too has yeah, pretty much so- an unparalleled legacy. Like everyone's gonna go see this. Every she person on Earth is gonna see this. Unparalleled legacy. <laughs> Halo <laughs> franchise has passed over sixty five million in sales. That's what amazing. franchise? Let me guess. The Halo. The, last of the us. one I just talked about. The Halo franchise. No, the. <laughs> This game doesn't have bitch bombs. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome, man. That's that's wow. That's a lot of money. And over how many uh, versions? Of how many different uh, Halos have been released now? Good Seven. God, I don't know. Uh, a lot. Five main ones, I want to say. Yeah, there's been about five main games if you include uh, ODST. So about that's... Halo Reach. Yeah, about yeah, Halo Reach. Games. Okay, Halo Reach. Okay, that's next. What about the uh, the? O- the uh, oh, yeah, top-down uh, strategy games. Oh, yeah. Wait, they included that? Like that. I don't know. I don't know. That's awesome, I think either man. way you look at it, this is incredible sales, though. Halo is obviously one of the biggest franchises in gaming, and I think Halo 5 especially is going to be huge. So this is amazing. Halo is a great franchise, and I'm super thrilled to see this. I'm looking forward to playing Halo 5. Everything I see about it, it looks like it's going to be fun. The Didn't beta it? was awesome, too. Yeah. yeah. Didn't uh, Halo 4 get less... Sales zone, then like Halo, yeah. then it went down in sales as the years went on, or yeah, was Halo it? Four was not good. Halo Three was amazing. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like Halo Three is good. Like I think it went down in Halo Four, but I don't well, know. Hopefully, when they changed the mode, the was, when they changed the three eight three, a lot of people weren't on board with the changes that were made with the new developer. But hopefully, they they can get shit back together. You guys so, tried the, the, the demo or the the beta for Halo Five? Yes, I, I yeah, loved it. Was, it was kind of fun. Cool. Very fast-paced yeah. for a Halo game, and yeah. especially down sites a lot of people didn't like. I thought it was a good fit, so we'll see. Right. I like that new mode with like a, this huge area, too. I think that's cool as hell. Yeah. All right, guys, so moving on. This this is a very sad story because you guys may know what it's like to have been in a relationship that ended badly, and that woman comes back and slashes your tires and puts a banana in your tailpipe. She does all this crazy stuff, and that's what's going on with Hideo Kojima. Hideo Kojima's name has been completely removed from the Phantom Pain's box art. Konami is a vindictive bitch. What do you guys think about this? What relation have you been in, first of all? <laughs> 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 oh, <my God. laughs> I think the more interesting story is VC's <laughs> back history here. I'd like to hear a little bit more. <laughs> he was so detailed that story, too. And she puts a banana in your tailpipe. <laughs> You've been through this, basically. Oh, oh, He's had experience, clearly. I don't want to dredge up those bad memories. I don't want to cry. I don't want to. I'm fucking crazy. And I've met, I've met crazy women, but none that crazy. Okay? <laughs> Konami has really got balls and nerves of steel to actually be doing this to Hideo Kojima. The guy who's made this franchise what it is for them to take his name out the box art is almost like them egging on the consumer. Yeah, I did it. You're still gonna buy the fucking game. It's and I don't so buy it so they're too. right, but it's it's still so dirty. It's underhanded and dirty what they're doing to this man. I think it's getting unbelievably out of hand too. Like Konami, it seems like it's in the news like every few weeks or months. It's always coming up that Konami is the crazy ex girlfriend that does something else crazy to piss off Kojima and make him. Upset. Now they're taking his name off the game. That's not fair at all because he's the one who created this game. He's the creative mind behind it. And Konami is just totally, totally upset about this whole thing about Kojima leaving and saying it's his last game. They're acting like a child in this situation, Konami. Like, I, I just can't believe they're going through all this. They're making themselves look terrible. For what? One day we're all, sense to me. One day, guys, we're going to know what happened at Konami. I'm willing to wager that, that Hideo Kojima slept with someone's wife who's high up in Konami because this is this is going beyond a professional uh, vindictive situation. This is more of a personal attack. You know, yeah. first of all, you, you stop Silent Hills, you close down um, Kojima Productions' Twitter page, right? You take his name off the box art. What are they going to do now? They're going to pour mustard in his underwear? This is insane. And they shut down the whole doing. studio because of a broken relationship between one developer. You don't need him. You can do the whole game without him. You don't need to shut down a whole studio. That's but, crazy. Basically, I'll tell you this, though. That what you just said, I think it's one above that. I think he slept with someone's daughter. Like I said, like, <laughs> or their mom. <laughs> At the same time. Then he brought the like, into mother? work. He's like, check it out. <laughs> I just did that. Has anyone seen my mother? I hit that. <laughs> 
Damn it. Yeah, but that game is still going to be good. I just, it sucks that he went out like that, but it, it might be good news because he might be doing something on his own now. He has the freedom to do whatever he wants. I think he'll, he'll find something to do, and then we'll all be lucky because he'll be able to do something without anyone holding him back. To be yeah, honest, yeah. so I that that's the one. Good thing. He's wanted to get out from under that Metal Gear Solid series forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's and finally now he free. Can. Now he has his excuses because he doesn't have the rights to Metal Gear Solid either. You now, so like now he could definitely do his own game and do I, something. All you over know what? Game. I would buy his knock on, just like Koji Igarashi is making um, Bloodstained. To me, that's Castlevania's spiritual successor. I have kind of left Castlevania any future iteration of what Konami does alone. I'm looking forward to Bloodstained. If Hayao Kojima makes his own spiritual successor to Metal Gear, I'm willing to leave Snake. They already fucking changed uh, Snake's voice now to Kiefer Sutherland. That's not who Snake is. Then they take the man who made the game and throw him to the wolves. Metal Gear is over. Whatever he does in the future, if he wants to make a spiritual successor, I'm right there with him to support the guy who made a great, fantastic game and franchise, and that's how I feel about it. I can't wait to see what he does next. Well, I feel like this is going to be the last Metal Gear anyway, so like, I'm more disappointed about Silent Hills because I want to see what the hell they're going to do with that game, and then that's the one that, to me, is like they cancel that, and that's, yeah. that, that's something I want to see. Yeah, yeah that was crazy. To see. Konami is a, a fucking insane. Uh, and they, you guys wait for another week till we find out what they do next. Hideo Kojima, his bread was stolen from his sandwich. So Konami, <laughs> Konami. Konami. Somebody has the tires insane. in the parking lot. <laughs> and put a banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so moving on. You guys remember an old game last generation called Prototype? I think Prototype 1 and 2 came out years ago. Yep. Uh, third yep. person... An adventure type of uh, action game. Yeah, they made a couple of those, didn't they? I think they made two. Prototype one and two. And Prototype, now they've been remastered. Prototype Biohazard bundle announced, and it's now available on PS4 and Xbox One. So obviously, this port up has been worked on for a long time, and and they announced it when it's finally available. You guys excited about this? No. Is it Biohazard Hazard in the U.S. too? Uh, that's just a name that, that Robbie put here. <laughs> That's what it's called. Don't shoot violence. the messenger. <laughs> okay. I, I uh, played these games. I, I thought one was much better than two. Um, and uh, other than that, that's really how I feel about it. I won't be picking it up. It's not something that I'd want to delve into again. I've never played the prototype games, but they look super fun to me, so I might pick this up when it's like, cheaper. Because it's 50 bucks for both. That's a little huh. expensive. Have you played Infamous before? That's that's pretty yeah, much yeah. how the game is. Yeah, they came out at the same time, didn't they? <laughs> they they're all yeah. Yeah. Biohazard like, came out like exactly the same time. Yeah. I played both. Like I did like I remember I did both walkthroughs for that full walkthroughs on YouTube on that and like that those games were fun, but yeah, it's glitchy, but it still was fun, you know. But <laughs> so, that's that. moving, moving on. Dead Island 2 developer Jaeger Development has been removed from the project. This doesn't bode well for people who've been looking forward to Dead Island 2. Okay, so there's two very disappointed people out there. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know what to think about this because after uh, uh, what is the just came out for PS4 and Xbox One, the, the great zombie game? Dying Light. Dying Light. That's all I need as far as zombies go. Uh, to me, Dead Island, whatever. Uh, Dying Light, like they, wasn't Dying Light actually developed by the people who made Dead yeah, Island 1? Yeah. Yeah, yeah technically, like, that's Dead Island 2. Yeah. The other game is made by a bunch of chumps who apparently couldn't get the job done. And they couldn't work together either. God yeah. Damn it. Learn to yeah. work together. Let's move on, because that story sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shit on me for reporting the news. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, no, uh, speaking of shit in uh, Toronto, Ubisoft Toronto is working on a brand new AAA IP. Thoughts, guys? Are exciting. Awesome. They're a good yeah, studio. The same same team that Jade Raven just created. Uh, no, no, they no, made yeah. Wonder Cell Blacklist. This team that was their first game. So, oh, okay. Yeah, they did a phenomenal job with that game. I'm excited for whatever this is. They're a really good studio. All right. I, I guess That's all, all I need to say. There, there are certain Ubisoft games that I hate and some that I love. So I guess we'll see. <gasps> Ooh, this is great news for people who have Androids and tablets. Or very oh. bad news who've got poor time uh, time management skills. <laughs> Angry Birds 2 has been announced. What do you guys think about this? You guys going to put some time aside and and use it for Angry Birds? No. What can they do? Uh, they the 
direction now. I don't know what the hell are they going to do here. I actually liked Angry Birds. I thought it was a lot of fun. I liked Angry Birds Star Wars because they oh, added, yeah. or no, Angry Birds Space because they added like that orbital kind of thing to it and it made it a little, a lot more fun. You know, if you're sitting in the waiter room waiting for your car to get repaired, what else are you going to do? Play a little Angry Birds. So yeah, I'll play this. So, so what's Angry Birds 2 like? Is it reverse? You're the pigs now going against you're gonna the You're going to shoot like... to the left now. You're going to shoot yeah. right to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Pigs were bad. changes. <laughs> uh, retailer Memo says Batman Arkham Knight will be broken on PC until September. <laughs> is this true? So let me... let me give a little clarification on what this is. So supposedly Kotaku, I think Australia found an email for EB Games that basically it was news about Arkham Knight on PC. They're, the patch for the game that's going to fix all this is not going to be available until September at the earliest, like September to November, that area. What the hell, Warner Brothers? Like, are you kidding me with this? Wow. Just a bunch of assholes. I, I don't know what else to say. This is well, ridiculous. Rocks, Rocksteady isn't truly to blame here. Whoever ported the PC version needs to be blamed for this. Yeah, There's Rocksteady is innocent. Uh, it's Iron Rock Galaxy. They, Iron Galaxy, I believe, did the port, but they were given like two months to do it. Rocksteady yeah. is definitely blamed for this, because they're, yeah. they're supposed to check that before anything, and they, they weren't focusing on that because the money was on the PlayStation version. That's where the best version is. And the thing is, like, I literally got the PC version for free. Like, obviously, I did unboxing for the PlayStation 4 version, but I got the PC version, put that thing in, and, like, Comparing it to the PS4, how is the PS4 version running so much smoother? Like, it should not be doing that. And, like, it, it's it's so glitchy. Like, you should have seen how many times when I, gl- I glided through buildings. Like, like I'm, you know I mean? The game is just a mess. Like, it's a glitchy mess. Um, game saves don't work sometimes. Like, sometimes you'll be playing and you just did a mission. You turn, off the, you turn off the game, you come back later, you have to do that same mission over again. It doesn't save oh. things sometimes. And that's just, it's a mess. I, 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 I mean, I understand, you know, especially for, for people out there who only play on PC, it's an unfortunate situation, but I personally find more blame with the developer who ported it and Warner Brothers. They actually have all the money. They can fix this issue. If Rocksteady was, was making the game and creating it for PlayStation and Xbox One, and they contracted someone else out to port it to the PC, doesn't some of that porting responsibility go to the company that was doing the port? And from what I understand, it was like this months before it was even... Uh, released. The whole situation is just fix anything. unbelievably ugly. I've seen footage of the game running on PC. It is unbelievably bad. Like, I didn't realize it was that bad, and this is just not acceptable, Warner Brothers. I know I've said this multiple times, but what a bunch of assholes. Like, really? Don't do that. Say it Robbie. The incentive is, right away, is you go to where the money is, and the money it was a PlayStation was the ones paying them the most out of every other company to advertise for PlayStation 4. That's just the way it is. They also have the biggest market right now, so they're, they're aiming to make sure that version was the best version, hands down. So if anything else wasn't great, they could fix it as they go along, and it, and it actually makes the PlayStation 4 version look even better, which is even better for a partnership when you have money. So, like, Evolved. Like, that's the only thing that, to me, there's no incentive for them to fix the PC version unless the PC version was the main version. And it sucks because it, it should have been perfect at all of them, you know? Even if PlayStation 4 has some glitches, like, it has some serious glitches at times, you know? And they patch that day one. And then there's another patch, like, a couple days later, and it pretty much fixed the PlayStation 4 version. Why they fix the PlayStation 4 version so quickly when the rest weren't? It's because PlayStation put the money into it. Which is, I think it's wrong, but that's what companies do now. Like that, companies accept money ahead of time from other, um, you know, for either Sony or for Microsoft, and that's it. That's why PC gamers get screwed sometimes because of that. So. Yeah, it's not fair too because you spend thousands of dollars on this fancy gaming rig, this powerful PC, and then a lot of times you get these terrible ports. I think it's really unacceptable. And you've got to run fans. fucking Windows 8 on it. <laughs> That too. That sucks. You'll be saved. Not in eleven days. Not in eleven days. Like ten days. So. In eleven days, Windows ten. Forget about Windows nine. Go straight to Windows ten. Thank goodness. Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection is getting a demo. Okay, cool. I'm gonna buy that shit anyway. Yeah. I think so. I mean. 
I want to really go back and replay those games. I love those games, especially this is a great way to get ready for Uncharted 4, so that's cool they're doing a demo. I, I, like have a theory, I have a theory on why this demo is coming out. Do you guys have any idea or thoughts on why they're actually demoing this game? No. They're demoing it because they want the people who are coming from other consoles or other play styles to be able to experience a game they may not have had a chance to play before. That's so people who've maybe been on the Xbox 360 for, you know, growing up most of their life, people Robbie's age who've never had a PlayStation, never enjoyed what Uncharted was, will actually be able to demo the best version of Uncharted now and understand why people are batshit crazy over this franchise. So it's really I, I love the first Uncharted game. Uncharted 2, I thought, was one of the best yes. games ever played. It was like unbelievable. It made me feel like I was a star in an action movie. Uncharted 3, not as good as Uncharted 2, but still very still, good. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually looking forward to playing all three of them again. All good fantastic time. games. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Did they announce that they're going to include multiplayer maps for both Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 or no? Uh, I don't know. There's no multiplayer. No, there's no multiplayer. For Uncharted 2? None. And 3. Wait, what, are you, wait, what are you talking about? Welcome you to the world, this? my friend. You've been gone for a while. No, I'm saying, like, what do you mean? There's no multiplayer in the game. You're talking about... What are you talking it's, about? They're not in the collection, the there's no multiplayer for Uncharted 2 and 3. That's what I was asking. They're releasing multiplayer. I didn't say, like... I thought you guys meant there's no multiplayer at all for those games. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, oh, no, 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 no. We mean the collection. Yeah, there's no nah, multiplayer. No, nah, no, I wasn't paying attention. That's why I asked. I didn't know if they were okay. releasing the multiplayer. No, so I'm like, wait a second. Uncharted 2 yeah. didn't have multiplayer. I know I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The new version on PS4 won't have any. That's unfortunate for the people who buy it now. They won't have any multiplayer. So that's the sucky part about the whole game. Uh, yeah. Nutty Dog is pretty jacked up. The Gearbox Software is working on an authentic new Brothers in Arms title. Never played Brothers in Arms, but Brothers. You have it? Oh my God, it's so good. Arms. Brothers in Arms is like a real-time strategy game, but with like small units. Like instead of having like a, a unit on the screen that represents like a thousand people, it's like you got one guy and you got to like position him specifically, and then you got another guy who's got like a rocket launcher. You got to position him specifically. It was World War II. It was awesome. I'm really happy. It's an, it's an RTS. Yeah, but it's like it's it's a more intimate RP, RTS. I would just like XCOM. That. Like XCOM kind of. No, no, because I, I I did play the single player, but I hardly remember it. What I liked was the multiplayer because it, instead of having like a thousand units at your command, you'd have like five, and you had to be like wicked strategic about how you use those five. It was really fun. Oh well. Hopefully I'll get a chance to finally enjoy the uh, I don't think it ever came to consoles. Do you guys remember that ever coming to consoles? Uh, I'm sure Brothers in Arms is on PS2. Yeah? I'm pretty I'm sure it game. was. I'm positive I am. I'm, now I'm double checking. But yeah. Oh, and this next bit of news I did not see, but I'm pissed off that I didn't. Randy Pitchford has teased the future of Borderlands. Did you guys get a chance to see this? And if you did, please uh, enlighten me. Robbie? <laughs> so I think Ryan right. is gone. <laughs> yeah, we lost him. Randy Pitchford teases the future of Borderlands. I didn't read this article, and, but uh, I'm sure it's super interesting. Why don't we keep moving? All right. <laughs> Fallout, <laughs> Fallout Shelter. <laughs> Fallout Shelter has earned five point one million dollars in the last two. I mean, the first two weeks since its release. Five million for That's a free Fallout game. game, huh? They didn't Jeez. come out to Android yet. When the hell is it coming out for Android? It's not out yet. I, I know because I have an uh, iPad, but I don't mess with it too much. Kate's been, she was playing that today in between um, Fallout Shelter and Rocket League. Every time a match stopped, she went back to her damn shelter. And I made a joke that she was multitasking her ass off. She loves that game. She's crazy about it. Wow. Okay. I had a question that sort of ties into this, but it ties into Fallout. Um, do you guys think Microsoft... Uh, made a mistake with uh, the Tomb Raider game. And the right. reason why I'm bringing that up because it releases the same exact day as Fallout 4. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't yeah. That. Like, I, I noticed that. Like, I noticed I'm like, wait a second. They're coming out the same exact day as That's Fallout really 4. Like, is, how many people are actually going to buy the Tomb Raider game? Like, I think a lot of people are going to miss that that game. That so, sucks. I, I was just saying, I, that's why I still have a feeling Tomb Raider is going to be delayed. But that's just... My opinion, because I, I think once it goes, it's competing against Fallout 4, so I don't know how that's going to work. All right, real quick, that Borderlands story was basically a non-story. It was, uh, 
it was Gearbox basically saying there is Borderlands, another Borderlands coming, but we're not ready to talk about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last bit of news that we got, uh, I know, Briar, this is going to hurt, hit you more than it's going to hit me, but one thing I did hear that really pissed me off. First of all, guys, Destiny 2.0 update is coming, and they're going to be tuning weapons, and there's going to be lots of changes to every weapon. Yeah. And one thing that I heard is that the Gallahorn is going to get nerfed. Yeah, that's Whoa! right. <laughs> there's a ton of changes. Uh, Thorn's going to get a nerf. Uh, all hand cannons are going to get a nor- nerf. A lot of this is centered around PvP play. Uh, so there's certain weapons that are just, like, dominant in PvP play, like Thorn, like the last word. Uh, so those are going to get nerfed. But some weapons are dominant in PvE play, like Icebreaker and Gallahorn, so they're going to nerf those as well. What they want to do is tune these weapons so they're not always the ones you go for. So not, there's not one exotic that is always the one to get, right? They're also, they mentioned this specifically, if, if you go on to LFG sites, looking for group sites, looking to do Prison Elders or Crota's End Raid, uh, and you don't have a Gallahorn right now, you'll get excluded because of that. And uh, the reason for that is because Gallahorn is so powerful that you are less of a man, so to speak, if you don't have one. Hey. Uh, and they're trying to eliminate that. And it's not fair. It's not It's not right for one gun to be so much better than everything else. Uh, and I understand the people who are upset about it because they, you know, they spent months hoping to get one. But it doesn't make sense for it to be so powerful. The, the thing is, though, doesn't that, Brian, doesn't that take away from the excitement of getting a drop, though? Like getting it's something still going to be out. good. It's still going to be more than a rocket launcher, right? But, I mean, like, when you get that ultra-rare weapon that you've been waiting for, you know what I mean? Like, that excitement was part of the game. Because, like, like Robbie said before, like, when you play a game, like, you're, he's playing forever, like, online. He kept seeing all these people, you know, getting all these you know, exotic or legendary weapons. And then he finally got one, and he just felt so excited. Is that excitement... Yeah, that's what it does. It pisses you off. Everyone else is getting stuff you're not. And when you finally get it, you feel that excitement too. And get I feel like yeah, yes. yeah, when everything's almost the same level, it's really – I mean, yeah, I guess it's more fair co- competition-wise, but like at the same time, it's also like you're just like everyone else. Well, it's still <laughs> going to be special. The Gallahorn is still going to be a special weapon. Yeah. What, what the Gallahorn does right now is it fires a rocket and it then it explodes more. about six wolf pack rounds kind of spread out. And they then combine and hit the target again, and it does as much damage as another rocket. So it's like firing two rockets at once. The damage of those wolf pack rounds. That's all they're really doing with the right. They're gonna da- they're gonna nerf the damage of the wolf pack rounds. So they'll still do more damage than a single rocket. Mm-hmm. They won't do double the damage of a single rocket. The thing and I, about the Galahorn too is like it's light years ahead of every other rocket launcher. Now it's going to be as many light years ahead. It'll be yeah. still probably the best one though. So hopefully it'll be a strategic decision to bring it or to not bring it, as opposed to yeah, definitely bringing it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the Gallahorn. You're not on the fire team. Getting used to that too. I got yeah, so lucky when I got my Gallahorn. Kate and I got it at the exact same time. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was nuts. I, said, I, I, I was Gallahorn. laughing at you the other day. You made a video and you're like talking about how good your Gallahorn was. And it wasn't the fucking, fucking Gallahorn. <laughs> I don't know what Ryan Lusher was, but it wasn't the you, know, you know what happened? I had to, uh, damn it, I felt like such a fool in that video. I switched over to my icebreaker, and I was leveling that up, and I forgot to switch back to my Gallahorn. And oh so my. I, was, I was like, my Gallahorn's not shooting two, two rockets. What's going on? He's like, oh, yeah, get some Gallahorn, baby. Oh, Boom. God. Whoops, wrong one. It's like, that's not Gallahorn, man. <laughs> But all man, right, should we wrap it up, guys? Is that all we got for today? What are you guys doing this week? What, what are you guys going to be playing? Are we going to play some Destiny together? Are we going to play some Rocket League together? Not too nerdy. We love you, and we're so happy to fucking see you. Yeah. <laughs> well, i got to blow some dust off this game. Briar just cried a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, but I finally got it back. Not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I left it at my friend's house a long time ago. I haven't used it since. But you probably got three level thirty fours by now, huh? Nah, you. People have been playing on my account, so I'm sure I got some level thirty something. Like I, I probably have at least a thirty two lying around. My friend's been using my account, so nice. I'm yeah. sure that's all he does play Destiny. So I'm sure it, it should be. Uh, he's got to be bummed enough. that you took that back. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> that I took it back. He can be pissed off from taking my game, and I took it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then that's wrong. 
Uh, it's kind like, of yeah. Buy your own game. It's not that expensive yeah. now. <laughs> Bass, buy your own damn Destiny. Yeah, I think you could buy it. You could buy it. I think for twenty dollars used at this point. But they have like the new version coming out soon, right? That you get yeah, like so, everything. So it's oh, yeah. you get the collector's edition for eighty bucks. Yeah, I did. Everything. <laughs> Why did you do that? Why did you do that, Briar? Because I literally make a living making Destiny videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to buy it again. All you need to do is buy a Taken King. But well, I, I want the extra stuff. Yeah. Oh, I know Briar's going to get it. Come on. He's got 20 cases of Red Bull next to his refrigerator. Oh, that's, yeah, that's crazy. You think that... Are you going to do Got a code here for you. Oh, he definitely does <laughs> There we go. X X three four 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 T N as in Nancy. Hopefully it's not taken. He's got a big Santa bag full of those. Oh my cans. god! <laughs> All right, I think this is a good place to end it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good week.